will discuss about minimal change disease so what is minimal change disease uh, it is uh, the most frequent cause of nephrotic syndrome in the children so what is nephrotic syndrome in this there is heavy proteinuria in the previous video we discussed about the definition of the nephrotic syndrome uh, so uh, in nephrotic syndrome there is heavy proteinuria and minimal change disease mostly occurs in children and is less common in adults and the peak incidence of this disease is between 2 to 6 years of age now a very characteristic uh, feature of the disease is that uh, whenever the patient is given corticosteroid therapy there is very dramatic response to it that means the condition gets mostly treated after steroid therapy now one another important characteristic of this disease is whenever we are seeing the glomeruli by the light microscopy that is by the normal microscope by the light microscope then you will see no uh, abnormality that means the glomeruli will uh, virtually appear normal but on electron microscopy you can see that there is effacement of the food processes of the uh, visceral epithelial cells that is the podocytes we will understand about this in detail okay now there are some other names by which minimal change disease is also known it is also known by the name idiopathic nephrotic syndrome because the actual pathogenesis is not very clearly known it is also known as nil disease because there is no abnormality seen on the light microscopy lipoid nephrosis that i will tell you how why it is known as and also food process disease because there is effacement of the food processes of the visceral epithelial cells now this is the microscopic picture of the glomerulus so what you all you have is there is a endothelium okay now endothelium in case of glomerulus is fenestrated type there is fenestrated uh, in the uh, endothelium then you have something known as visceral epithelial cells and then you have parietal epithelium so visceral epithelium and parietal epithelium now this visceral epithelial cells they have projections from the cytoplasm as in uh, form of the food processes so here you can see this is a visceral epithelial cell this blue one okay and the projections are thrown in the form of podocytes so this is known as the food processes these are the food processes seen and these are the food processes of visceral epithelial cells okay in the electron microscopy also you can see this these are the food processes present so how what happens in case of minimal change disease so normally you have your food processes this is your endothelium which is fenestrated that is there are some loose gaps present over here okay and then you have your visceral epithelium now this visceral epithelium has the food processes and in between there is a this is known as the filtration slit out of which the uh, filtration will take place now in case of uh, minimal chain disease due to certain immune reasons due to certain increase in the cytokines antibodies there is a uh, effacement and detachment of the food processes that means there can be effacement okay and there can be detachment of the food processes what will it lead to it will lead to increased filtration and therefore the proteins can go from the blood into the urine that is lead, leading to protein urea in these patients okay now so uh, the minimal chain disease why we think it is related to immunity because it sometimes follows respiratory or routine prophylactic immunization in this what is thought to be is that there is elaboration of the cytokines which is damaging the visceral epithelial cells and it is causing protein urea also one theory more is uh, point uh, points towards loss of glomerular polyanions this uh, change in the barrier in the anionic uh, in the charge barrier is also contributing to the protein urea but the exact pathogenesis is not known also now we are just uh, going towards the uh, ultra structural details so this is the podocyte this is again one food process so you can see the, this is the filtration slit now in this filltration slit the there is something known as nephrin 
okay and there is something known as podocin now nephrin uh, it extends from the food processes and dimerizes to form a hair connection okay so this is the filtration slit within the cytoplasm you can see there is podocin there is cd2 ap there is actin filaments so this hole is the formation of this filtration slit now when uh, it is seen when there is mutation in the nephrin gene okay so it also leads to a form of nephrotic syndrome it is known as finnish type of nephrotic syndrome and the morphology if you see of that disease in the glomerulus it resembles that of the minimal change disease so there can be mutation in both nephrin and podocin i told you what is the role that they form the filtration slit and when there is mutation in the nephrin gene it leads to a finished type of uh, nephrotic syndrome and the morphology is type like that of minimal change disease now going to the microscopy so microscopy one two things are very characteristic firstly on the light microscopy there is nothing that means the glomeruli absolutely normal on electron microscopy if you see the glomeruli appear uh, basement membrane uh, it will appear normal that means there is no electron dense deposit uh, material which is deposited mostly in you in other glomerulopathies you see uh, material antibody antibody complex which is deposited on the basement membrane but here there is no elect electron dense material which is deposited only one thing is important is that visceral epithelial cells they show uniform and diffuse effacement of the food processes so this is a uh, is characteristic of that of minimal chain disease that is uniform and diffuse effacement of the food processes earlier this was term was used fusion of the food processes because when uh, these are the two food processes when they will get effaced it appears that they have fused but this is just a incorrect uh, term used okay it is uh, actually the effacement of the food processes not fusion of the food processes now here you can see on the electron microscopy the food processes they are effaced okay so here uh, it should be like this this but they are like this this okay so there is effacement of the food processes so it is not that the food processes effacement is only seen in minimal change disease okay it is seen in other uh, proteinuric states also like membranous glomerulopathy deptic glomerulopathy so we also seen that but when this effacement of the uh, food processes is seen with the normal glomeruli on the light microscopy then only we make a diagnosis of minimal change disease one thing important to see is if you give the patient corticosteroid therapy there is remission of the proteinuria okay one thing is this then on immunofluorescence okay there is no immunoglobulin or complement deposit whenever we describe a glomerulopathy in case we go firstly from the light microscopy then we go to the electron microscopy then we go to the immunofluorescence studies so here there is no immunoglobulin or complement deposits but one thing to note uh, is that earlier i told you the other name for minimal change disease is lipoid nephrosis so why it is so because what happens is when there is from the glomeruli okay the glomeruli there is increased loss of lipids and protein into the proximal tubules okay so the proximal tubules try to reabsorb the lipids and protein back therefore the cells of the proximal tubules are sometimes laden with the lipid and protein therefore the name lipoid nephrosis for this disease so from the glomeruli it the lipids and protein go down towards the proximal tubule but they try to reabsorb it so the cells are laden with these things and therefore the name so the clinical features uh, are the patient prognosis if you see is very good in case of minimal change disease because it patient rep, uh, very uh, nicely responds to the corticosteroid therapy or even if the patient remains corticosteroid dependent uh, whenever the child will hit puberty the disease automatically resolves also in child uh, adults it is less uh, uh, good than the children but then also the long term prognosis is very good okay so here that thing you should remember is the renal function 
functions always remain good the protein urea is also highly selective only albumin is secreted and this disease very nicely uh, responds to corticosteroids okay so this was all about the minimal chain disease uh, do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos thanks for watching